Hello everybody. So now I will talk about the chapter related to contraception and birth control. So that's the next topic on our course, Population and Society. This uh, lecture is divided into three different sessions. I will give a brief history of fertility control, discuss about the current patterns of fertility control, and also I will talk a little bit about the methods of family planning. So in terms of the methods of family planning, there is a great portion of the chapter that I'm not, I'm not included, which goes into more technical details about the methods of family planning. I will focus more on the overall trends of methods of family planning and fertility control, as well on, on the effectiveness of these methods. So today, most married and unmarried sexual active women and men in the United States and in other developed countries, they limit their family size uh, and or controlling the time of spacing of their children through birth control. So most of the people nowadays in the US and in developed countries do use birth control to limit family size and control the timing and the amount of years that they have children. Fewer people in developing countries use birth prevention methods, so we do see some variation between countries. Uh, there are a variety of methods available to women and men to prevent births. The most popular uh, methods to, of contraception in the world are of the pills, the contraception, uh, sterilization, and abortion. The effectiveness of these methods, they vary from one another, and each one has its, its advantage and disadvantage. And then we'll discuss a little bit about the levels of effectiveness uh, from these methods, but mostly the most popular methods are the contraception, the pills, uh, sterilization, female sterilization, and abortion. So just to uh, show you that uh, the notion of birth prevention appeared early in human history. So that's not a novelty for human societies. So you see that for several uh, centuries the idea that we can prevent birth and prevent being uh, pregnant has been already there in, in our society. And most fertility control methods were relatively ineffective if we look back in human history with the exception of induced abortion and withdrawal. So although we had the notion of birth prevention uh, early on in our history, still these methods they were not so effective. And in more recent decades, we have seen an increase on studies talking about contraception. So this a book on medical history of contraception, it gives a, a really in-depth survey of contraception covering many cultures worldwide over 3,000 years. This other book uh, provides a history of contraception from the pre-Christian era to the 1960s, with an emphasis on the interpretation and reception of contraception in the Catholic Church. So you start to see a more in-depth historical analysis that give us more information about uh, contraception through our, our history. And some other books, uh, this other book uh, extends and updates much of the work that was done before about the history uh, on the use of contraception. Um, this other one is also a major historical treatment on how contraception was uh, used from previous times until more recent days. And this uh, book from 1999 focuses on the use of plants and herbal products to regulate fertility. So we see a lot of different studies that dealt on, on the study of contraception. 
on the historical use of contraceptive, contraceptive methods. Contraceptive methods have been available and used by the end of the 19th century, uh, except for hormonally based methods, which are more modern methods. Condoms were available since around the 17th century. Uh, Intrauterine devices, the IUDs, were first developed in Germany in the 1920s. But IUD research was not possible in the U.S. until much later, exactly because of legal and other types of restrictions in the country. The manual vacuum aspiration methods of abortion was first described by the gynecologists of Queen Victoria of England in the second half of the 19th century, showing that these methods have been used in our human uh, history for, for several centuries already. The psychological principles behind oral contraceptives, they were developed in the, in the 1920s, but the method made no progress, partially because of the lack of a cheap source of steroid and also because contraceptive research was not academically acceptable uh, back in the 1920s. So it actually became more available in more recent years or in more recent decades. The second topic about uh, in our lecture now, I will give you some current patterns of fertility control to give an overview of how uh, fertility control vary by countries and how that has been changing over time. So based, the Population Reference Bureau collects data for several countries in the world uh, data from 2002 to 2012 on percentage of married women using very various methods of family planning, they are available for several uh, regions of the world and, and for the world as a whole. And this data usually focus on women between 15 and 49 years of age who are married or cohabiting. And the data portray a contemporary empirical picture of the reproductive revolution since the 1950s using various methods of family planning. For this specific data, collected by the Population Reference Bureau, by PRB, uh, the data is not available for all countries in Europe and Oceania due to scarcity of family planning surveys conducted in many of these countries. So here, we have the percentage of married women using family planning methods in the world in most major regions. This is data from 2002 to 2012, an overall number for that period. So consider all methods, 63% of married women were using uh, at least one method of family planning, uh, one method of family planning. And in terms of uh, modern methods, 57% of them were using more modern methods. 8% were using pills, 13% IUD, 5% injectables, and so on. So you see that the highest percentages uh, uh, around the world were uh, of modern methods were for IUD and female sterilization. In more developed countries, we don't have uh, much detailed data here, but you see that the variation, there is some variation compared to the less developed countries, but not, uh, the difference is not as high as we would think, but you see some uh, great variations when you compare more developed and less developed countries to the least developed countries, both in, whenever we look at the percentages of women using all, any kind of method of family planning, and also modern methods. And uh, so African countries, they usually have the lowest use of modern contraceptive methods. And Latin America and the Caribbean, the, the rate of women using family planning methods is high. And also in, in Asia as a whole, but we also see some variation in the use of modern family planning methods uh, within Asia. And overall, in least developed countries, the highest percentage of uh, modern methods are women uh, using pills and injectables. 
in the in North America pills and male condom and also female uh, sterilization and also male sterilization. So pills and female sterilization are the most common methods of family planning in, in North America. So you, you do see some variation, but the variation that you see it's really related to the kind of modern method that these women are using. For example, in Asia, IUD is much more prevalent than what you see in Latin America. In Latin America, um, the percentage of women using pills and female sterilization are much higher than other methods. And in Asia, it's more concentrated on IUD and female, female sterilization. So less developed countries have almost similar levels as more developed countries, but the use of family planning methods is quite uneven across the various countries, as we saw in the previous table, mostly when we compare more developed countries and the least developed countries. And we also know that the percentage of married women using modern methods, they vary a lot across countries. So in South Sudan, in Somalia, in Chad, the percentage of married women using modern, uh, modern methods is much lower than in UK, China, Portugal, and Norway, for example. Whenever we are talking about the non-users of contraception, we know that 37% of married women worldwide are contraception non-users. So if we just go back to the previous table, so 37%, just go back there, the 37% is exactly women who are not using any methods because we know here for the world, 63% are using at least one kind of method, maybe not a modern method, but uh, one sort of family planning method. So 37% of them are not using any method. So that's this number here. But out of this 37% of women not using any contraceptive method, there are several subgroups of women here. So one of them are women who are surgically sterile via, via uh, hyster, hysterectomy. So the, what is this procedure? It's a surgical removal of the uterus and sometimes the additional removal of the, the tubes and the ovaries or by some other non-contraceptive operation. So these women who are surgically sterile, they are not currently using any form of contraceptive uh, method, but exactly because of the surgery, they are not uh, susceptible to get pregnant. So this group of women here are within the 37%, but they are not, uh, they don't have a chance of getting uh, pregnant exactly because of the surgery. Among this 37% of women not using contraception, we also have women who themselves or their partners are known as surgically sterile. So they did not pass through the surgery that made them sterile, but they are not likely to have any children and maybe also their partners. Also, some of these women who are not using any form of contraception, some of them are women who are currently pregnant or are in the postpartum period. They might be breastfeeding, so they are not likely to get pregnant. They are already pregnant or they are not likely to get pregnant because they are in the postpartum period. And moreover, there are other subgroups of women who uh, are these known users of contraceptive methods. For example, women who are trying to become pregnant but are not yet pregnant and they are not using uh, any form of contraception are a subgroup within that 37%. And also we have women who have never had an intercourse or have not had an intercourse in the, first, in, in the past three months. So these women are considered to be not sexually active, so they are not using any form of contraceptive method, but because they are not sexually active, they, are not, they don't have a chance of getting pregnant. Then finally, you have women not using contraception, and they are engaged in unprotected intercourse, 
So they are sexually active. In other words, they had an intercourse in the last three months before the survey, but they do not intend to get pregnant, but because they are not uh, using any form of contraception, they are at risk of becoming pregnant. So what's important to look here, just going back to the previous slide, out of this 37% of women not using contraception, not all of them have a chance to become pregnant because some of them are sterile, either surgically or non-surgically. Some of them are already pregnant or in the postpartum period. Some of them are actually trying to become pregnant, so it doesn't make sense for them to use contraception. And they do want to, to get pregnant in this case. Some women are not uh, sexually active. And what would be a concern for the society or for policymakers or for um, people as a whole are those women who are not using contraception, do not want to become pregnant, but are engaged in unprotected intercourse. So this would be uh, the, the woman that uh, should be using some form of contraception if they do not want to, to become pregnant. And so looking at data for the non-users of contraception in the U.S., 62% of all women age 14 and 44 years of age, they are using some sort of family planning method. And 38% of them are not using contraceptive methods. But of this 38% here, only 8% uh, who are not using contraceptive methods are sexually active and thus are at risk of unintended pregnancy. So, Whenever we look at these numbers, we have to consider actually what's the percentage of those who are not using contraceptive methods are sexually active and do not want to get pregnant. So this percentage in the U.S. Uh, is around 8%. So contraceptive methods can be divided into traditional and modern methods. The traditional family planning methods include less effective natural methods, such as uh, periodic abstinence, also withdrawal, long-term abstinence, and prolonged breastfeeding. So these are considered to be traditional family planning methods, which uh, are usually less effective than modern methods. In terms of modern methods, the main modern methods that we have for family planning are oral contraceptives, intrauterine device, contraception injection, male condom, and also sterilization, which can be performed both uh, uh, by men and women. Other modern, uh, modern methods of family planning are diaphragm, uh, vaginal contraceptives, contraceptive implants, and female condom. And some other natural family planning methods that are available as well are fertility awareness methods and uh, standard day method and billing evaluation method. For this course specifically, the textbook does discuss in details, as I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, each one of these modern methods, but I'm not going to go in detail about them because I'm focusing here more on the overall trends on the use of these methods. And also, I will show you some data about the effectiveness of these modern methods and the previous uh, traditional methods that I, that I showed in the previous slide. So women vary in the use of principal contraceptive methods around the world. However, the patterns of use have not changed much between 1990 and 2012. Most common methods is female sterilization, to 18% worldwide among married women, and is really common in Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean, and in North America. The next popular methods are intrauterine device, IUD, 13%, which is really common in Asia and in Europe, and oral contraceptive, the pills, and male condoms, both at 8%, 
injectables at 5% and major sterilization at 3% are also some popular methods. So this information here is summarized in this, uh, in this graph. Percentage of married or in union women using different methods of contraception in the world, Africa, Asia, Europe, Latin America, the Caribbean, North America, and Oceania. And then you have traditional methods, other methods, IUD, injectables, pills, and female sterilization. So you see that in Asia, and you have data for both 1990 and 2011, the first and second columns within each region. So you see that in Asia, the percentage of those using female sterilization is really high, and also IUD. Uh, in Latin America and the Caribbean, female sterilization, but also uh, the pills has higher percentages. So pills in Latin America and the Caribbean is higher than in Asia, and in Asia, IUD is higher than in Latin America and the Caribbean. In uh, North America, also female sterilization has a high percentage of use by married women or women in union, and also women using pills and other modern methods. What you see also in more developed countries, like in Europe and North America, you have women using all different sorts of methods. So there is a greater mix. There is more availability of different methods for women in these countries, and so there is less concentration in specific methods. In Latin America and Caribbean, there is more concentration in pills and female sterilization. In Asia, in female sterilization and IUD, but in Europe and North America, you have a greater mix, a more availability of methods that women choose from. Uh, so, one or two contraceptive methods they comprise half of more or more of total contraceptives among the married or cohabiting women in almost all countries. So most countries, within specific countries, you see the prevalence of really few methods that at least 50% of the population of uh, married or cohabiting women use. The Pew is the dominant method in 20 countries, and traditional methods are dominant in 11 countries. Other modern methods, they comprise a relatively small percentage, such as hormonal implants, diaphragm, and spermicides. And traditional family planning methods are employed by only around 6% of married women and men in the world. Specifically in Africa, overall family planning use is very low. Among married women who use a method, one-sixth of them uh, use a traditional method. In Sub-Saharan Africa, one-fifth of them use a traditional method. So still, the overall family planning use is low, and a lot of these women are still using traditional methods, which are usually less effective than modern methods. In many Sub-Saharan African countries, traditional methods account for more than 50%, of those using uh, some sort of contraception. In Somalia, for example, 15% of women use any method, but only 1% use a modern method. At the Demogra Democratic Republic of the Congo, 18% of women using, use any method, but only 5% a modern method. Cameroon, 23% any method, but only 14% use a modern method. So you still see really low percentage on the use of modern methods in, in sub-Saharan African countries. In terms of induced abortion, it's just important to explain the, the concept of what exactly means induced abortion. And induced abortion is a pregnancy that has been terminated by human intervention with an intent other than to produce a live birth. The most complete data on induced abortions are from countries where abortion is legal. Exactly because it's legal, the data is usually uh, collected with more reliability. But even in the U.S., the quantity and quality of the data varies considerably um, within the country. 
So, but just to give an idea about the numbers of induced abortion, in 2008, there were an estimated 44 million induced abortion in the world. Most of the abortions in the world happen in developing countries, 38 million, rather than in developed countries, 6 million. And of course, because the population in developing countries is higher than developed countries, so it has to do also with the, the size of population in these different countries. This differential reflects the uneven distribution of the population in the two groups of countries, exactly what I just said. And in terms of the abortion rate, the, the abortion rate is pretty much the number of abortions per 1,000 women between 15 and 44 years of age. So you get the number of abortions divided by the, the, the population of women between the ages of 15 and 44 and multiplied by 1,000. And the abortion rate decreased from 35 uh, per 1,000 women in 1995 to 28 in 2008. And these numbers declined from 34 to 25, sorry, 34 to 29 in developing countries and 39 to 24 in developed countries. So developed countries had higher rates back in 1995 than developing countries, but in 2008, they have lower abortion rates than in developing countries. So this is just uh, the same uh, data, kind of detailing what I discussed in the previous slide, the overall number of abortions in millions from 1995 to 2008 uh, decline in, in the whole world, in developed countries decline from 10 million to 6 million women, and in developing countries increase from 35 to 37 million women. In terms of the abortion rates, it declined in the world, also declined in developed countries, and also declined in developing countries, as we saw in the previous slide. And you also see some variation across the countries, and you see that Europe, that had really high abortion rates back in 1995, now it declined to 27 uh, abortions per 1,000 women. Uh, on the ages of 15 to 44. So it was above all other regions in the world, and now it has lower rates than Africa, Asia, and Latin America. So uh, the greatest abortion rates decline happened in Europe from 48 in, in 1995 to 27 in 2008, as I just mentioned in the previous slide. And this is uh, primarily due to the drop in Eastern Europe uh, abortion rates that drove the entire continent's decline. So abortion rates were high in East European countries, and then they dropped a lot. So the overall uh, rate in Europe declined from 48 to 27 uh, per 1,000 women. Abortions do not uh, happen more often in countries where they are legally versus in countries where they are illegal. For example, uh, the rate in Africa was 29 per 1,000 women, and in most African countries, abortion is illegal. And in Europe, the rate was 27 per 1,000 women, as we saw in the previous slide. And in most European countries, abortion is legal. So in African countries, for example, where it is most illegal, you have higher abortion rates than in Europe. Abortions are usually safer in countries where they are legally performed than where they are illegally performed, exactly because people can uh, visit uh, clinics where they are legally performed by, by medical doctors. According to the World Health Organization, a non-safe abortion is a procedure for terminating a pregnancy that is performed by an individual lacking the necessary skills or in an environment that does not conform to minimum medical standards or both. So that's the definition of unsafe abortion as explained by the World Health Organization. And just to have an idea of the rates of unsafe abortion, the percentage of all abortions that weren't saved increased from 44% in 1995 to 49% in 2008. There is a disparity 
between the proportion of unsafe abortions in developed in, and developing countries. Almost all abortions in developed countries are safe. More than 97% of all abortions percent in Africa in 2008 were unsafe. So pretty much we see that most of abortions performed in developed countries are safe, but almost all of abortions performed in Africa were unsafe based on the, the definition that I, I mentioned before. In Asia, the proportion of abortions that are unsafe varies widely by subregion from virtually none in Eastern Asia to 65% in Southeast Asia. So you also see a lot of variation within, uh, within Asia, between Asian countries. And uh, in the case of contraceptive behavior in the US, and here using data from 2006 and 2010 from the National Survey of Family, of family Growth, the NSFG, uh, and this is data related to US women between the ages of 15 to 44. So 62% of them reported using contraception and 38% reported not using any contraception. This is the same data that I mentioned before in, in previous slides. The most popular methods for US women using this data were the pill, 17.1%, 16.5% reported being sterile, uh, so among women, 10.2% uh, were having sex with like a male condom, and 6.2% of them reporting having a partner who was sterile, so we, uh, we had 62% of male sterilization. And unlike the situation worldwide, for US women, the IUD is one of the least favored methods. So you see pills, female sterilization, male condom, and male sterilization as the most popular methods uh, for US women within these ages between 15 and 44. So this is pretty much the same uh, data that I showed before, but in a table format, 62% of women using contraception, almost 38 not using contraception. And this is the distribution of those that are using contraception. And uh, we also have, among those not using contraception, we also have those that are, never had an intercourse, didn't have an intercourse in the three months before the interview, and had an intercourse in the past three months uh, before the interview, it's only 7.7% out of this 37.8% of the women are not using contraception, but are in, do not want to get pregnant and, and, are, and they are sexually active. So out of these ones here that are not using contraception, only 7.7% of them might get pregnant, although they do not want to get pregnant. But since they are sexually active and they are not using contraception, they are likely to get pregnant. So this is the percent, the percent distribution of women age 15 to 44 by whether they are using contraception. And this is 62% uh, are using contraception and 38 not using. And this is the breakdown using the same data as we saw before in the previous table. And in the previous table, we saw that here, 38% are not using contraception. So just going further, of the 38% of women not using contraception, 2.1% of them are sterile, 9% are pregnant, just gave birth or are trying to become pregnant, and almost 12% have never had an intercourse. And 7.3% are not sexually active. So all these numbers, if you go back in the table here, we see them there. So 37.8% are not using contraceptives, and 11.8% uh, of them, for example, are never, never had an intercourse. And uh, that's exactly here. Almost 12% of them never had intercourse. 7.3% of them are not sexually active. That's the 7.3% here. But then 7.7% of them are listed here, are non-users of contraception and are sexually active. So only 20% of the non-users of contraception are sexually active and do not fall into one of the other categories. 
only sexually active women are truly at risk of unintended pregnancy if they are not using contraception, they don't want to get pregnant. So it's 7.7% out of the 38%. So this data here comes exactly from this table, 7.7% 7 .7 out of 37.8%. Only 20% of these women are at risk of having an un unintended pregnancy. Uh, among all contracepting women aged 15 to 44, the most popular contraceptive methods are oral contraceptives and female sterilization in, in the US. Uh, in terms of contraception by marital status, among currently informally married women, the most popular method is female sterilization. 30.2% of married women use female sterilization and 55.5% of formerly married women uh, were sterilized. Among cohabiting and never married women, the most popular method is the pill. 32% among cohabiting women and 46%, almost 47% among never married women. So you see a difference on contraceptive uh, use by marital status. Um, married women or formerly married women, high levels of female sterilization, and never married women or cohabiting women, which tend to be younger, higher percentage of uh, use of the pill. And that's exactly this, this table here. Um, women who are currently married, higher levels of female sterilization, currently uh, cohabiting, higher levels of uh, use of the pills, formerly married, not cohabiting, higher levels of female sterilization, and never married, not cohabiting, uh, also high levels of pills. So pills here and sterilization here, as we mentioned in the previous slide. In terms of effective contraceptive used by union status and race ethnicity, uh, here we have the weighted predicted probabilities of effective contraceptive use ag across race ethnicity. We see that among white cohabiting women, they are the ones using more, um, using more uh, contraceptive methods. They are more effective uh, compared to other race ethnicity groups and compared to other um, union status. And the group that has the lowest rates of effectiveness of contraceptive use are married black women of, with only 0.43. So these are predicted probabilities and uh, it's pretty much showing that only 43% uh, of married black women are using contraceptive methods that are effective. While 64% of women, uh, white women cohabiting are using effective contraceptive methods. So these are predicted probabilities using a series of regression models that control for union status, race, ethnicity, parity, age, union duration, education, and all these different um, variables kind of showing that this uh, white woman cohabiting have the highest chances of being using uh, effective contraceptive methods. In terms of contraception variation by age, uh, there are patterns, uh, it's important to understand the patterns of contraceptive use and non-use of women uh, by age. Among uh, contraceptive users, among those who are currently using contraceptive methods, um, oral contraceptive or the pills vary by age. Young women have the highest percentage of uh, using oral contraceptives, and women, uh, older women, those in, in their early uh, 40s, they have the lowest rates of using pills. And in female sterilization, it's exactly the opposite. Younger women, they have lower rates of female sterilization, and older women, they have higher chances of being used in female sterilization. So it's kind of related to the marital status as well. In this case here, younger women, more pills, older women, more female sterilization, or higher percentage to use female sterilization. In terms of contraception variation by education, 
among contraceptive women in the US, those with less education tend to rely on female sterilization, and those with more education, they use the pill. Uh, use of oral contraceptive, for example, it's 11% among women without a high school education and 35% among women with at least a four-year education degree. So less educated women tend to rely more on female sterilization and those with more education, as we see, higher percentage uh, of, the, of them use uh, the pill. The use of contraception in a woman's first premarital uh, intercourse is important because it is the beginning of exposure to the risk of non-marital pregnancy, of having children, and sexually transmitted infections. And it's also important to know this information because teenagers who do not use a contraceptive methods the first time that they have sex, they are twice as likely to become pregnant and have a baby compared to teenagers who do use a method the first time that they have sex. So the next graph here is the percentage of teenagers use contraceptives at first sex and data going from 1982 to 2006, 2010. And we see that overall the percentage of those using contraceptives when they have sex for the first time has been increasing over time. And the most common method in more recent years is exactly condom, either condom alone or with other methods. And you also have a proportion of those teenagers using other methods the first time that they have sex. So overall, it increased from around 50% to almost 80% between 1982 and 2006. In terms of abortions in the US, abortion became legal in the US in 1973 in the Roe v. Wade decision by the Supreme Court. So women, in consultation with their physician, have a constitutionally protected right to have an abortion in the early stages of pregnancy, that's it, that, that is, before the fetus is viable, free from government interference. And just to have an idea, between 1973 and 2011, 53 million legal abortions were performed in the US, 1.3 million in 2000, 1.2 million in 2008, and just over 1 million in, in 2011. So it has been declining in more recent years. Uh, percentage of women expected to have an abortion by age 45 is 43% in 1992 and 30% based on data from 2008. And about 20% of pregnancies in the U.S. end in abortion. Abortion is one of the most common surgical procedures experienced by U.S. Uh, women. And this is just a... a um, information about the number of abortions per 1,000 women aged 15 to 44 by year from 1973 until 2011 in the U.S. So the U.S. abortion rate reached its lowest level um, in 2011 since uh, 1973. So it increased. Uh, in the 70s up to the early 1980s, and then it started to decline into more recent years. This is all data from the Guttmacher Institute. Of all abortions in 2011, 33% were performed by women aged 20 to 24, and 24% by women aged 25 to 29. And by race ethnicity, uh, of all abortions in 2011, 30% were performed by non-Hispanic black women, 36% by non-Hispanic white women, 25% by Hispanic women, and 9% by women of other races. In terms of religion, of all abortions in 2011, 37% were performed by women who were Protestants and 28% by Catholics and 45% uh, by women who have never uh, married and are not presently uh, cohabiting. And 61% of all abortions in 2011 were performed by women 
who have at least one child. So around 89% of all legal abortions performed in the U.S. in 2010 were to women in the first 12 weeks of their pregnancies, 63% by women in the first 8 weeks of their pregnancies, 26% by women in the 9 to 12 weeks of their pregnancy, and only 1% by women in the 21st or later week of the pregnancy. So most of the all legal abortions were performed by women with, within the first 12 weeks of their pregnancies. And this data is in a graph format uh, right here. You see that uh, most of the abortions, they are performed by women within the first 12 weeks of the pregnancy. So these three data here, you get the 33, 29, and 25 combined. One third of abortions occur in this, uh, at six weeks of pregnancy or earlier, and 89 occur in the first 12 weeks, which is exactly these three percentages as I mentioned before. And one third of the abortions occur at six weeks of pregnancies is this number here. So now we saw the trends of uh, fam family planning methods used in the world and in the US. And I'll talk a little bit about some more about the methods of family planning. There are several ways to categorize contraceptives, whether or not the contraceptive serves as a barrier to keep the man's sperm from entering the woman, whether the contraceptive contains hormones, whether the contraceptives requires continuous input, such as the pill or condom, or whether it's a more long-lasting, more perma uh, permanent a contraceptive such as IUDs and implants. And another way to categorize contraceptives is on whether to rank the contraceptive on the basis of its efficacy and failure in preventing uh, pregnancy. So here I'm going to focus on this point here, on the effectiveness of contraceptive methods. So I'm not going to go into details about how the, the contraceptive methods, they, they they work in order to avoid a woman getting pregnant, I will kind of talk briefly here about the effectiveness of contraceptive methods. Effectiveness of family planning methods may be measured in terms of uh, use effectiveness or theoretical effectiveness. Use effectiveness measures the effectiveness of the method taking into account the fact that some users do not follow the directions and the rules perfectly and or may not use the method all the time. So use effectiveness data tell us how effective the method is in typical use, in real life, because we, we take into account the fact that some users are not following the directions correctly. The theoretical effectiveness refers to the uh, effe efficaciousness of the method when it is used consistently according to a, speci a specified set of rules and used all the time. So the theoretical effectiveness is really related to how that method was supposed to be used uh, following a series of rules. But we know that we, in reality, we have to take into account how people use those methods in real life. So just using some measures of use effectiveness and theoretical effectiveness of methods, we have these tables in, this, in these slides here now. So these are the contraceptive failure rates, the percentage of women experience an unintended pregnancy during the first year of use by contraceptive methods, according to the use effectiveness in the first column and theoretical effectiveness in the third column. So... If, uh, if women are not using any method, the, um, the, the chances of women uh, getting pregnant is 85%, uh, both theoretical and in practice. So this uh, percentage here, remember, is the failure rate, the percentage of women experiencing an unintended pregnancy. Spermicides, uh, in theory, only 8% of women would have a chance to get pregnant, but in practice, 28% of them 
can get pregnant exactly because they are not using uh, correctly. In terms of fertility awareness method, uh, in reality, 24% of women can get pregnant even using these methods. In theory, the chances of them getting pregnant would be really low. Withdrawal, in theory, only 4% of women would get pregnant if they're performing withdrawal. But in reality, 22% of them can get pregnant. So you see that the use effectiveness of these methods, it's not so good because a high percentage of women here can get pregnant even if they're using spermicides or if they're following these fertility awareness methods or withdrawal. Uh, sponge, uh, the theoretical uh, effectiveness it's really low for uh, newly parous women, and but kind of increases for uh, when we're talking about use effectiveness. The same happens here for parous women. In terms of female condom and male condom, the theoretical effectiveness it's really good. I mean, in terms of like the percentage of women getting unintended uh, pregnancy is really low for condoms, both for female and male condom, but because people don't use them correctly, the percentage of getting pregnant is actually higher than the theoretical effectiveness. And what you see is that these other um, modern methods here, they have the lowest chances of women getting unintended uh, pregnancies. Although, again, the use effectiveness is not as good as the theoretical effectiveness. And then finally, IUD, female sterilization, male sterilization are the, the, the methods with the best use effectiveness because only this uh, percentage of women here are getting unintended, are becoming unintended pregnant when they use these methods. So theoretical effectiveness is really low, use effectiveness is a little higher, but it's still a really low percentage of women uh, getting unintended pregnancies when uh, they are using IUD or well, if they are sterilized or their partners are sterilized. So that was the lecture about contraception, contraception and uh, birth control. We base mostly of our lecture on chapter six from Population Society from uh, Post and Bouvier, but I also use some references from this other reference here. So thank you very much.